Good morning, Calvary Christian Church. To your pastor and my beloved friend, the Reverend Dr. Jamel Kemp, thank you so much for the honor of being able to speak this morning, to preach a word on this day that the Lord has made, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Dr. Kemp, and to all the mothers or mother figures under the sound of my voice, and to me, because I'm also a mother, and I'm so thankful to wear that title. I know there's many who are still on that journey, and I, I say a prayer for them every day. Um, but let's get into the word, because there is a word from the Lord today. And I think it's appropriate that we talk about a mother on Mother's Day. So come with me to John. I'm in uh, chapter 19, and I'll be starting with the B part of verse 25. So um, John 19, the B part of verse 25, and I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And the word of, word of God reads thusly. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. That's enough. I want to stalk the thought today, no ordinary love. No ordinary love. Now we know um, many times that when the way God loves us is compared to a parent or a father, but I say a parent, um, really a mother or a father because God is not male or female. And so when you think about that love that God has for us, it is the measure by how we should love not only one another, but especially our children. And is the love that our children have for us, we hope would be modeled after the love that we are to show uh, to God. And so when I think about a mother's love for her child, and in this case, her son, I think about sacrifice. Um, even while your child is in the womb, or even if you're going through infertility and you're preparing for a child, there's lots of sacrifice. Um, there's taking better care of yourself. There's uh, financial preparation. There's a lot of sacrifice um, that comes with being a parent. And for Mary, the sacrifice was even greater. Mary faced scorn. She faced stoning because of the times that she was living in and the patriarchy, which unfortunately we still deal with today. But she faced also the loss of her betrothed, of her beloved, Joseph. There's also trust, asking God for guidance. I know as a new mother, I was very concerned about being the best mother and I still am. I still don't have it all figured out. I still don't have the answers. And so I'm constantly seeking, even beseeching God to give me the answers, to guide me on how to be the best um, mother. Um, but Mary had a even more uh, trust, was even required more trust. Mary was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, something that I'm sure she'd not heard of someone having that done to them before. She was a virgin and she was a teenager, but she put her trust in God. She said, if that's your will, Lord, you know, I don't know why you've picked me. I don't know why I'm so favored, but that's that's what's going to happen. And she trusted God. And then there was there's joy. The pride of, of seeing your child um, developing and growing. And Mary, just think, the mother of Jesus, watching her son sitting at the feet of the, um, the priest in the synagogue and performing miracles. Because we know Mary had an inclination for some reason that Jesus could do miracles. The first miracle that we know of was at the behest or the request of Mary. 
And so we know that there had to be some kind of pride and, and joy that Mary had in being Jesus' mother. And we can only ma imagine that our Savior was the model child. And we love our children and have been loved as children when we were not the model child or children. <clears throat> and then I think beyond a mother's love for her child, when we think about no ordinary love, because it's not ordinary. When you love a child in the way that you're supposed to love them, it is no ordinary love. It is an unbreakable bond. And it's reciprocated when done correctly or done with guidance and, and the Lord looking down, it's reciprocated. And so a child's love for her mother, for its mother, or a son's love in this case for his mother, starts off with dependence. You are, as a baby, uh, they're so, they can't do anything for themselves. They're needy. And even our Jesus depended on his mother for nurturing, for food and for love. I don't know if you've ever heard, if, if you've had a child, you've experienced it, but they immediately place the child on your chest for skin to skin contact because they've just been taken from your womb, the only thing they've ever known. And now they're put on your skin and it's a way of building a connection, of reassuring them, of comforting them, of nurturing them because they are so dependent on us. They're dependent for transportation. They can't walk. I've, not, I've yet to meet a baby that comes out of the womb walking. So they, they need you and they need you for, you know, they don't, they don't, they've been, they've been rocked in the womb. They've been rocked in the womb their whole, your whole pregnancy. Men, just bear with me. If, if you were born, this happened to you. So you can relate, even if you can't relate from being a mother, you, a child was, was rocked in the womb. They were, they were, um, reassured and nurtured in the womb and now they're outside of the womb and they're totally dependent on you to do all of those things to nurse them to rock them to sleep then they look at us for support for their mother and their father but you guys will have your day in june talking about mary and jesus right now so support they look to their mother for support they are taking their first steps and they're coming to her trusting her to hold their hand and then trusting her when she says you can let go you can do it their first words now I will give you this fellas a lot of times the first word is dada but mothers are there nurturing and talking to their children so that they do pick up language so that they do start to understand calling them by their name so they recognize this is my name this is who i am um even from food we've we've nurtured them um i was blessed to be able to nurse my boys but even um my youngest after a while didn't didn't um nurse we had to go to formula but i was still there holding him cradling him and nurturing him and feeding him so children are dependent upon their their mother, their parents, but their mothers for support, for, um, and then for honor. We, we learn how to honor based on how we're, we interact with our mothers. We learn to respect our mothers and to operate in a way that's pleasing to our mothers. I have two boys and while they're not perfect, I know that they seek my, my approval they seek to please me. They seek to bring me joy the same way I seek to bring them joy. And it begins to come full circle. As, as children get older, they support their parents. They do things for their parents. I think about, you know, my beloved grandmother and how my mother and father were there with her in her dying days. And they were able to support her. And my father would sit in her bedroom at night because she got uncomfortable sometimes when she woke up and she was alone. And she would go to sleep with my dad sitting in her room and many a night she would wake up startled in the middle of the night and she would call my dad's name and he would say, I'm here. So it, it, become, it comes full circle and the sacrifice even comes full circle because my mother and my father and, and anyone that's been a caretaker for their parents have begun to make sacrifice 
for their parents. So we see this extraordinary, no ordinary love that Mary has had for Jesus, the sacrifice and the trust that she's experienced, but also the love that Jesus has for her. The love that any child, when when treated the way that we're, they're supposed to be treated, has for their mother. Even, as I said, the first miracle that Jesus does is because Mary says, do whatever he says. You know, you can help them out, Jesus. I know you can. And we, like I said, we know, obviously, she's had some inclination. So Jesus has likely done some other miracles that were not recorded, but that were um, in Mary's presence. And so we have this um, love, this mother, and this son. But this is no ordinary day either. Jesus is on the cross at Calvary. And I can only imagine as Mary looked at that cross and saw her baby on the cross. Her dreams were hanging on a cross. Hope was hanging on a cross. Love was hanging on a cross. And grace was hanging on a cross. And dreams may be deferred, but hope springs eternal. Love never dies and grace is amazing. And so here was Jesus looking down at his mother, concerned about her physical and spiritual well being. Jesus in this moment is fully human and fully God, even on the cross. And we think about, he doesn't just follow tradition of younger brothers um, taking responsibility for the mother. And History, historians and, and theologians would say that, that Joseph was long dead by now. And so Jesus had been taking care of Mary. And he had younger brothers that, have could, have, that could have taken on that responsibility. But he asked his spiritual brother to take on this responsibility. His brother who's already a disciple. So even in his physical concern for Mary, he still had a spiritual concern. And yes. Jesus knew that the cycle of life was being broken. He knew that Mary loved him before he was born as he grew in her womb. Ah, but he loved her before she was born. And even as he faced death on a cross, he loved her. John 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. John wants us to know exactly who Jesus is. Jesus, fully God and fully human. God in three persons. He is the represent. He was the word. He is the word. He is ever God and, and in this moment ever human and we know that there was grief on that cross we know that Jesus said if this cup could pass from me but he knew that he couldn't not for us he did it for us for you and for me and for Mary and even though he was in pain, even though he was going through death and yet already dying, he still knew if you destroy this temple, I'll build it back in three days. He still knew that if you lift me up, I'll draw all men unto me. But even in that moment of being human, he had concern for his mother. But more than that, concern for all of us, our souls. 
And so even though there was grief on a cross and there was a nightmare on a cross, our Lord, even in his trauma, was thinking of us. He, he loved Mary before she was born. He loved us before we were born. This no ordinary love, yes, it describes the love of a mother and a son and a son to a mother. But oh my, it describes something so much more. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love. And so as we think about Mother's Day and we think about modeling the love we have for our children after God and we think about teaching our children to love in a way that is pleasing and representative of the way, of the way that we're supposed to love God, we know that love did not die on that cross. We know that hope did not die on that cross. We know that our savior did something for us that took more than an ordinary love. It was extraordinary. It gave us life. It gave us the ability to, to be parents. It gave us the ability to have abundant life. It gave us the ability to have eternal life. And aren't you glad that the love that God has for us, that it transcends all the love that we've ever known, love that may have disappointed us. Not every child has had a perfect parental experience. Not every mother has had a perfect experience as a parent. There's been loss, disappointments, and oh my God, the, the pain of losing a child to break the circle of life, to stand there and watch your baby be crucified. But praise be to God, praise be to God that he got up with all power in his hands. Praise be to God that there was no ordinary love because there is no greater love than what Christ showed for us when he went to the cross on Calvary. And the fact that even in this moment, even in the seven last words, he mentions his mother. He shows his concern for his mother. He makes provision for his mother. It lets me know that mothers hold a special place in the heart of God. But we all do because he died for us, every one of us. He thought we were worth saving and so he died. And that is no ordinary love, amen.